how did the band form? Well, it actually started uh, me and, and Lewis. Uh, we started back in, I want to say, I keep forgetting the year. 15, 20, 16? I think 2013. Uh, yeah, 2013, I believe. It's uh, just one of those things where, you know, uh, I was basically between me and Luis, I was, I had, I had up until that point already, like, I want to say like seven years of maybe even a little less um, of guitar experience, you know, just playing guitar. And it's just something that I've always never thought I'd make a band, but my brother made his own. So they kind of like made me want to do my own. And uh, I didn't know Luis very well, but it was just one of those things through friends saying like, Hey, I heard he has a drum set. You guys are, you know, down a jam or something like that. So I hit him up. Uh, he, he said, yes, little did I know he had, Yes, he had a drum set, but he had no playing experience. <laughs> he was yeah, he just <laughs> bought it. But it was just one of those things, I guess. But we jammed. It was terrible, but it was enough for me to say, you know, fuck it. Let's make a band. Um, yeah, well, it happens, you know. Yeah, oh, yeah. I mean, then, then just from there, we just started getting the ball rolling. Um, you know, other friends that we had who were also in the music just kind of jumped on board. Um uh, and some of the people that we just kind of got through, like other mutual friends that kind of knew us so so and so to say, hey, you should hit this guy up. We did. They joined. But then as the years went on and some musical differences, we basically, you know, cut some people loose, you could say. And then uh, ultimately, Austin filled in the spot of the rhythm guitar. Yes. Uh, and growing pains happen, you know. It always happens, you know. The band lineups change, stuff changes, you know. People have a change of heart. You could you could be in the best position in the world, and if you're just not feeling the music or something changes, you know you're, you're not with it anymore. So it, it happens. And yeah, I um I joined in 2017, a good few okay. few years later. So I mean, I've been here for a while, but you know after I wasn't there since the start. And um yeah, since you know I joined, you know we did our first album and stuff, and we you know went through. We had a hell of a time with that kind of stuff. Did all of that, but we had so we, we got that out and it was cool because there was a nice like worldwide kind of desire for it. And we sent stuff to Japan. We sent stuff to wow. Europe, to Ukraine, stuff like that. It was really cool. And then pretty much like right after we put out that first album, we were in a, uh, we were playing some shows, stuff like that, where we kind of, we, we had, had to impress some judges and stuff like that. So we were like, you know what, let's just put out something new. Let's work on some new stuff. And I had a big back catalog of new stuff that I was like, yeah, let's, let's figure one of these out. And so we ended up working on that and that kind of snowballed into writing, you know, this next album that we're you know working on and coming out with. And, you know, that single that you heard is, is that's yeah. is that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, you know, some of this stuff's been written for a little while, but you definitely, we go through and we edit it and freshen it up and stuff. But yeah, it's uh, that's kind of been the recent, probably three years, you know? Cool. How'd you join the band? Uh, I, was and so you know the our local scene used to be a lot different there are a good few more bands i think there's less bands now than there used okay. to be i don't know maybe okay. six years ago but uh i joined i was in school in choir and i knew a person <laughs> I, I met a person who liked like i was wearing like you know like a battle jacket with a denim patch everything they liked us so we, we started talking and her boyfriend uh was a drummer who was in another band that uh, they, it was kind of more of a punk crossover thing, which wasn't exactly my kind of thing, but I was like, you know what? I want to join a band. I want to do something. So let me get into this and, you know, just kind of get into the scene and see what's going on. And eventually, you know, I met Mortalis back in their, you know, original incarnation back in probably 15 and 16 around there. And uh, then they just kind of hit me up to jam one day and I was like, yeah, sure. I'll come over and jam, you know, like, cause these guys are, you know, they're playing thrash, which is a bit more my, kind of style that's what i like most I, I enjoyed the crossover stuff and the energetic stuff i was playing before too but thrash is definitely where i'm at so after uh you know we jammed for a little bit you know we just kind of had a show and i forget that first show was like a live stream kind of show back late 2017 okay. so it was it's been a while or was it in pop studios in van nuys i think it was or, in like van nuys or something like that like yeah okay interesting so so i'm just curious uh what's the story of making up from the cryogenics well, that one, I would say, um, see, that one, like, is starting out as far as, you know, making this album, at first we kind of, I guess, um, treated it just like, <clears throat> like, here's basically, it's a, it, it's just a bunch of laid out, you know, music based on like a, 
it, you know, bands that were inspired by mainly the, you know, the big four, Megadeth, Anthrax, Metallica, and a little bit of Slayer here and there. But, uh, it, I mean, really, it was just kind of like the way we look at it, especially now that it's done and I get to look back and kind of re-listen to that album. And I can actually remember what I was thinking almost as each song was like being made and, and just the whole process. It just, if I had to sum it up, it really just comes down to um, what we love to play and doing it in our own way, you know, just kind of like keeping like thrash alive for what it's worth, like, you know, making it sound like how it used to, um, you know, it's something that we kind of like joke about here and there with the modern scene. Not that there's anything, <laughs> you know, to hate or not, you know, it's just what it comes down to is a lot of the bands start, start to sound the same. Yeah. Um, so, and, and again, no hate. We've definitely been impressed by quite a few, um, but it's just, again, with this album, the the first album I should say the, from the crowd jacks is it really kind of is like pays homage to like what is the old school thrash and that's kind of like what we or mortalis was kind of born on and we ho- kind of like hope to like keep up you know and then this second album that we're going to be working on soon or that's in the works i mean we can only hope to get bigger and bigger and better awesome awesome and that's so interesting to hear because you can so you can hear so many influences on that first record and oh, you always yeah. hear how much you guys evolve, especially with the new single. Like, mm-hmm. really, you guys have really oh, yeah. found your sound, you know? And it's yeah. just really, really cool to, like, hear you guys grow as a band. Oh, as yeah. a, a listener and a fan, it's really, really awesome to see. Yeah, and no, especially really because... Albums. Very excited. No, yeah, because especially with the first album, basically, most of it was already written by the time uh, Austin joined the band. And really, oh. the... Where yeah, like pretty much like yeah. the what the main just main two songs because we still went back by the time Austin joined. What we did try to do is go back and, and maybe edit. kind of yeah, like uh really bring in the style to see like hey, this is what we have so far. You know what do you like on it? Maybe you can like kind of infuse your own style. Um and and we did kind of go back in some songs and he kind of put his own taste on it. Uh, but really the main two songs were uh, Austin had a major uh country, writing, you know yeah, yeah like writing and all that kind of contribution is butterflies and uh say what you mean those are like and oh, awesome. alone alone in that album when you hear it through mm-hmm. you can actually see like and those hear are the kinda, difference of like whoa like, different these songs are this way which you know good or bad you know to how everybody's preference is and you know me personally my favorite song is butterfly it's like definitely the most to me is like heavy it's fast it, it really has a little bit Hell of yeah. everything in just the one song for as short as it is even and it's just like damn like that was as especially for like you know speaking for myself and I, I actually i think i speak for everybody when i say that when austin joined the band and we kind of heard that it was like damn i can't wait for the second album <laughs> sure, <Yeah. enough. laughs> but, you know, sure enough this second hell album yeah is definitely coming out you know it's, it's even it's brought you know it's crazy because austin is like this really i would say put us all in our place you know and like getting in our uh getting us out of our comfort zone if you will because like you know my solos had to step up a game uh vocals you know lyrics um and drumming, really, yeah, drumming yeah. even the just bass. timing wise and, and you know getting out of the same kind mm-hmm. of uh you know that's, that's the thing it's easy to write in your comfort zone and stuff like that you know because you everybody plays the same stuff that they're comfortable with and they know because when you play it you know playing something new is tough because you know you're gonna suck at it you know nobody nobody wants to play something that's uncomfortable because they know that they're gonna hear it and they're gonna say wow that sounded bad and then they kind of walk back or they they crawl back to their comfort zone where they can play stuff that sounds good and but sounding bad is part of learning and so you know it's that's the thing is you know when we started any of these songs you know like the single that you heard or some other stuff that we've played or even recent ones i mean we're, we're hardly getting through them and we're having trouble and our you know we're cramping up our hands just because they're they're faster, they're heavier, they're <laughs> angrier, they're more technical or something. And so it's really about, yeah, Say What You Mean and Butterflies, those two are kind of more the direction that we've moved into. And even further beyond that kind of stuff, it's definitely just trying to be a little bit different and just recognize cliches of trying to avoid them. You know, you don't always have to avoid them. They're cliches for a reason. It's because they were good and they sound good, but you have to, you know, eventually kind of get out of some stuff. So put in some groove stuff here or there, put in some weird time signature that's, you know, not to throw somebody off or something. You know, we're not trying to be tool and try to change up the stuff every measure, yeah. but we're definitely trying to, you know, does this sound good? 
okay, cool. Did it happen to fall into a weird time signature or is there just a, a, a dropped beat somewhere or an added beat somewhere? If it sounds good, it's good, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's so that's so interesting to hear. And you look at like a lot of like '80s thrash bands where they'll take like Princess of the Night, and you can hear that in like three thrash songs, you know, yeah. like sections of that in Saxon and what and whatnot. But and, and, but you guys like it's very natural, and there's no form of like I like this, so I'm just gonna kind of translate it over here. Like there's definitely uh, uh you can hear your influences, but it's it's very you guys. It, it's coming out of such a cool place. Um, so with this new record, uh, what have have these like two years taught you guys as a band? <laughs> uh, I mean, I think the first everything alone taught us so much, but yeah, yeah. Like, I don't know. Wow. Like, We've uh, how many I mean, gigs has it been? Like it, you guys have must must be like a whole different band. Yeah, at this point, you know, we, you know, the thing is that of course, you know, in in the past two years, of course, has included you know all the COVID stuff that went on. And I remember when that hit, you know, we had stopped. Playing. I mean, there was probably I think for over a year, probably a year and a half, we didn't play a single gig because there was just no gigs to play. There was nothing going on, and then it started up again. We we're like, okay, cool, let's kind of get into this and see you know what's going on and everything and that was the time that we were recording our first album so it didn't didn't really okay. interfere too much because we were like all right if we're not playing gigs let's put the polish on all these songs and get in there record them and you know everything and then after once we started 2022 was when we really started writing and looking into stuff playing more gigs you know we were playing on on like the sun sunset boulevard near like the whiskey and uh you know we were playing at the viper room and stuff and we were playing a lot of shows and kind of just moving up, learning a lot about gear, because we've changed a lot of our gear completely, learning a lot about mixing and recording in general, and then also just a lot of the writing and stuff, because, um, you know, we, the, the first time you can hear, you know, it's it's thrash kind of stuff. There's nothing crazy out there on it. You know, we're trying, you're trying to make something solid, because obviously if you're, you know, too out there, people are going to say, oh, I like this song and this song, but the rest of it, I'm going to throw away or this or that. So it's definitely a you know, safer record, more normal stuff and then we on this new one we definitely push the boundaries of our gear and our writing to really be different and make sure that people you know every song is different because it's, it's it's easy to listen to some songs by everybody and everybody kind of hits the same notes plays in the same areas plays in the same keys starts in the same stuff and that's fine i mean it's good is the thing like it's, it's worked for 40 years but you got to be able to distinguish stuff so there's definitely been a lot of notes that we've kind of taken from watching a lot of other bands and try to implement that and say, all right, let's, you see this pattern here on the guitar, on the drums or this or that, don't do this. Stay, I know this is your first instinct, but stay away from this or, you know, this or that. And so we've really been trying to just be as critical as we can in our own writing. And then with our own tones and stuff too, because we've changed our gear quite a bit. I mean, Sergio and I used to both run, you know, some solid state marshals that were not particularly popular, but you know, they, they got the job done. It worked, it was easy. And then I got, I started using some PV gear and I bought more and then Sergio bought more. He got some Marshall stuff. So now we've got, both of us have completely different rigs. We play different guitars and Lewis has changed his drumming style a whole lot back and forth. Uh, Vince is definitely, you know, he's gotten different basses at the time. He uses five string quite a bit more. Yeah, and pick now. <laughs> he does use a pick now so he can have a bit more attack too. You know, awesome. we've all kind of evolved musically specifically like in the writing and the creative department specifically. Because the thing is, you know, you can be a, an incredible player, you know, but there's, if you're an incredible player, but not a good enough writer, it doesn't really matter what you're playing because nobody's going to pick up on it or listen to it, you know, because neither Sergio or I are incredible. There's about a trillion guitarists that are better uh, than both of us. Of but <laughs> if you really are critical on yourself and you just, you know, make sure you don't fall into the same kind of cliches or generic kind of feel, that's better than being a, a great player, you know? Yeah, yeah. Very interesting to hear. And that's really cool. You guys are like pushing yourselves and stuff and you yeah. can totally hear it. Yeah, it's definitely, I mean, for both of them, you know, the thing is, you know, Sergio's recently taken vocal lessons yeah. and, you know, we went over stuff cool. so we, that, he, you know, he could learn that I, you know, I, we're probably going to do it again at some point because I want to get in there and, you know, up my game for any kind of backup vocals and stuff. Uh, that first album, because a lot of it was written before uh, I had joined, already had a lot of solos. So I was like, cool, I'm not very good at guitar solos, so I'm, I can skate by. <laughs> and then we started writing this, the, all this stuff for the second album. And we're just, and I was like, you know what, let me give it a crack at this. And now, 
you know, like you heard with that single that we uh, sent you, it's, uh, it's got like nine solos in it. I'm playing a bunch of them. So I'm like, cool. You know, it's, yeah. it's evolution. It's something new. Yeah. I mean, it, it rips. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, and to add on to what Austin just said, I think like the main thing that I would say too, is we basically matured as, you know, you know, people, but like mainly like when we kind of come together as a band, because now we've been a lot more selective on shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, okay. It, it's a lot of risk and reward yeah. kind of factoring, but also, you know, with, kind of like behind the scenes that nobody talks about when it comes to bands is like the funds. Uh, Cause uh, you know, recently, um, you know, we had like a, it, it just was kind of like a, uh, how do you say, we had like some trouble where we were supposed to go with uh, all the way to San Francisco to play a show. We were looking forward to it, but we got a flat tire and then we, we weren't, we were like barely going to make it. Mm. But you know, it's just one of those things where like, it, it just sometimes you take, you, you got to take the loss, you know, but we reach out to the, the, on the production the promoter, yeah, the promoter yeah. yeah just kind of let you know it, shit happens and we can't make it um or sometimes just in general like, we get opportunities and so many people like want us to come out and play over there but just because you know the money or you know just time and just kind of allocating our resources or the fact that we're going to the studio now is really can we afford to even play shows no matter how much we'd love to. Yeah. It can, it can be really tough. I mean, you can say with big bands today, you know, it's like what Anthrax canceled a bunch of tours in Europe because logistically it can be so hard to make any kind of money. And obviously, you know, of course we play music because we want to play music, not because we want to make money, but to be able to play it anywhere, to be able to record, to get art done, to do all of this stuff to actually make an album or even just make singles, it can be yeah. expensive. You know, it's like we had to get the art done and everything. And of course, you know, we can go away at, at a low buck, Oh, yeah. person but we didn't want to we want to make sure that it's as good as possible and recording wise you know make good merchandise for the fans exactly yeah oh <laughs> yeah that's the thing you know like we played a you know a show uh out here at a venue called the glass house and we made you know a great return on our merch and stuff it's because people like the designs and you know for the new single that we've got coming out we've got shirts made and i've already had like a dozen people say bro you got to save me a shirt i love that design and everything save me this size and everything so you know it's they're awesome Exactly. It's, it's, yeah, we're really excited to put all that out, but there is a lot of uh, logistics behind the scenes that, you know, we all kind of divvied up in different ways. You know, our bassist Vince, uh, I know you mentioned the TikTok earlier, our bassist Vince is the one who handles like 95, 90, almost 100% of social media stuff. And, wow. you know, he's great at it. He knows how to do all that kind of stuff. I'm Both of us are terrible with social media. I hardly ever post <laughs> anything. And not even so, on my own Instagram. Exactly. Yeah. But <laughs> Vince, you know, he really carries that social media game. And cool. that kind of stuff, it, it's very important. And so that's something that he has expertise in that we don't. And it really helps us to branch out. And then our drummer Lewis is the one who handles a lot of the business stuff, you know, b- between getting certain shows on board and seeing different shows, finding out our scheduling, doing merch runs and orders and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, we all kind of divvy up the work. Sergio and I are more the the creative musical force. Now you know, we now that's kind of what we did. You know, when Sergio said we matured up, we kind of organized it more. You know, less is just four guys doing something as to more of like an actual organized plan of all right, this is kind of your responsibility. We're all going to weigh in on it, but you know, if you can take the reins on this and you kind of be in charge of this, and so it's really it, it's tough to do that nowadays, and it's tough to make any money and be able to actually go out and play shows, but. You know, you do it. You do what you can, and you know we've been getting a lot of better opportunities now that have allowed us to take greater risks, which is is great. Yeah, congrats on that Napalm Death gig. Oh, yeah, that's that that's is sweet. right there. Yeah, we yeah. uh we played that Glass House back in March at St. Patty's Day, and it was a great show. It was incredible. I think there was like fantastic. <laughs> yeah, I think it was like four to five hundred people there, and we sold. You know, I mean, we pretty pretty much sold out of all the shirts that we had and a bunch of stuff. And it was great. And then we hit up the glass house again saying, hey, you know, whenever you guys have another show, let us buy, let, let us know and we'll see if we can get in. And they said, oh, yeah, I, I, 100%. We'd love awesome. to have you guys back. Are you guys good for this show right here? Like almost immediately, they were just like, you guys good for the, this Napalm Death show? We're like, yeah. hell yeah, that sounds great. So we're really excited. Awesome. For That's really, really cool to hear. And, and it's really cool to see you guys like get all this success and whatnot, especially like thrash metal in 2023, oh, yeah. you know? It's yeah, really, except, really awesome to see. Yeah, thrash is definitely. I mean, it's not the most mainstream metal there is right now, but it's still alive. It's still kicking. It's still going. You know, and there's a lot of you know 
when we started when we started in Kevin a lot earlier, there were it was all punk. Everything out here was punk. Oh yeah. Mm-hmm. And that's just how it is, you know. That's what the local scene likes, that's what the local scene likes. Um but uh now there's there's a good few thrash bands out here, so it's really fun to get to play with our friends and people that we know and stuff. And we're definitely it's not the most popular kind of stuff that people listen to all the time, but we're we're making it work. So yeah, yeah, there are people out there for it, you know, and it's it's so cool. You guys are getting that reach, you know. It's like yeah. you guys are at the other side of the country right now. Yeah, and it's really really cool. And maybe one day, I don't know. I hope to see <laughs> you guys, but <laughs> hey, but you know what? We're hoping to make it out to Boston. We're hoping to make it out, you know, go around the country and stuff. You know, we want to go down to, you know, we we've looked at different plans of you know doing a small West Coast tour and a little bit further in or going out to like Louisiana and back going out. So if we're out in the Boston area or somewhere nearby, we'll hit you up. Yeah, totally. Uh, I also, I, I work with a lot of bookers in Boston as well. So if you guys are looking for a venue, like, let me know, um, I can get some cheap spots and and like great, great venues too. Um, a lot of really, really healthy scene here for metal. Nice. Um, That's great. Yeah. Do you guys have like a favorite gig you've done or played? You've done like a lot of skate parks, which is really sick. And I yeah. feel like you guys like look like you're having a blast. Oh like, yeah. Like, there think... must be some awesome gigs you've done. Oh, man, There's some is... energy. Hey, yeah. I, I think mean, my favorite ones are the Viper Room though. I mean, like Yeah. There was something about, you know, that's the thing when I uh, mentioned earlier about the shows where there were judges and stuff. Those those shows were at a place called the Viper Room out here. And it's you know a block away from the whiskey you know you can walk oh, between them oh wow and uh the place is great just because the thing is you know, we knew that we had to put on the best show we could so we we're getting hyped up before and everything we were all interested and you know we lo- load up our gear get on there and we got our time to play our songs and playing new material and stuff was definitely uh playing the new material was cool it was fun to get up there and play new stuff as well as try to you know, pack the house with as many people as we know to get, you know, something going. So those were really exciting. But those skate park shows you mentioned too, they have a lot of energy because there's literally skaters going by left and right. Yeah. And people <laughs> going everywhere. So yeah, yeah, really, really awesome. Uh so let's talk about the new single, Iron Jungle. It rips. It is so awesome. It's Thank really you. cool. The art is amazing too. Um, how how much are you guys when it comes to like the art and, and every how it looks? Are you guys very hands on with that? Do you have like an image or an idea you bring to an artist? How uh, can you walk me through that? All right. Um, when we started that, I uh, I had the idea, just kind of I had a rough idea for it. You know, the idea of kind of the the hourglass look in there, yeah. you know, from the top to the bottom, and this idea that you know it's it's all it's nature, it's pristine at the top, it's new and fresh, and it's kind of it's trickling down into this kind of decaying city and stuff. And it, it all, the, the name of the single and the art kind of all hit me at once. And so I brought it up to the guys and tried to manipulate any kind of images I could find online to kind of get the idea across. And so we, you know, all of us kind of make little sketches, make little ideas, and we just kind of pin notes here and there so we can kind of bring stuff together. And then we, uh, I did, I think, you know, all of us kind of looked around at different artists and tried to find different styles that we liked. And, uh, the artist that we settled on is his name's Noah Noah Myhoff, I believe, and he's uh, he's done some really good work. We saw an album art of his. I can't I forget the name of the album, but it looks it just looked so cool. We just like it was it looked just right. You know, it was it was very professional. So we reached out to him. We reached out to a good few artists and stuff like that. We reached out to him, and he was really quick on it. And so. We eventually got to talking to him about it and we just sent him, you know, uh, reference images of, you know, we want the city to kind of look like this, give it a kind of New York vibe. We don't need specific landmarks or something, but just kind of, you know, lots of buildings, skyscrapers, all this kind of stuff. And it was, you know, we had just ideas on that. And then it was really cool because we kind of let him do his own thing. And he sent us an original, like a sketch for like a, a thing. And he had this idea, the whole sun that you can see in the background and everything was all his he was like, you know what? How do you guys feel about adding this in there? And we just love it because it gives a nice lighting to everything. And it has this feel of this kind of really, I mean, it, it works with the lyrics of the song just because of the, the heat and the burning and the, obviously the, the environmental yeah. kind of theme of everything. And it really kind of made it feel more than what it was before. Because, you know, it's like it's, an hourglass isn't 
the most, I'd say, original thing. There's been a bunch of hourglasses and metal, but it still is, you know, he added that touch to it. And, you know, it's got, he's got that engraving down at the bottom of the hourglass that says Iron Jungle on it and stuff. And it's really, it came out incredible. I mean, we love, when we saw the first sketch, we were like, wow, we would use that because even that was great. <laughs> so it was, uh, it was an incredible process. We're really, really happy with how we've been sitting on that art for a while, actually. And so we've wow. been wanting to put it out and make merch for it. But, you know, we just, we're finally getting to it now, which we're really happy about. Cool. And I just ask because you guys just have such a good eye for your band art and even the first record, too. It, it represents like the rebirth of heavy metal, right? Like from the cryogenics. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. It's like real. It's it's very iconic and cool. And it's really awesome to see that with the single, you bring that over, if not like even better. So it's very awesome. And, and this artwork, is this just for the single or is this going to be like the album art? Uh, this is just the single. This is just for okay. the single. Yeah, Iron Jungle. The Iron Jungle is just you know, it's a single. It'll be on the album, but we've got different ideas for the album artwork. Some stuff that's a, you know, encompasses more than just Iron Jungle. Iron Jungle is definitely a, a good uh, inspiration for the album artwork. It'll definitely tie in. But we've got some other ideas that we want to go through, and we think we're gonna probably use the same artist just because we we like his stuff so much, and it'll be consistent and. So we're we're looking forward to getting that done. You know, we, we've got to record everything first, and we're we're going to be going into the studio, I think, in two weeks to do some more recording on the next, uh, I think, three tracks that we've got. But uh, we've got some other ideas for album artwork that we kind of got to finalize and then send on over and see what he comes up with. Cool. So how uh, how different is the uh, creative process on this record compared to the last album? I don't know much about the last album, so. I wasn't here for too much of it. <laughs> <laughs> With the song development? Uh, yeah, just... yeah. Just like like recording, writing. Is it completely different? Oh. Are you guys using a, a whole new method? Well, honestly, I mean, uh, I mean, it really comes down to kind of like uh, similar to what Austin mentioned earlier about like, you know, so-and-so, like about certain people. Uh, I mean, really, it, it kind of, the, the, the main formula kind of stayed the same where, like, you know, each person would tend to like kind of, uh, I don't want to say stay in their lane, but the idea is just like we all bring that, just say, hey, can you work with this? I mean, really just uh, the formula more or less stayed the same, but now it's kind of like, you know, um, we're definitely venturing off into like where Austin is like, uh, you know, it's one of those like he's not a drummer, but like he, you know, with using his uh, recording kind of programs and stuff that he has for himself is like, hey, he's like, you know, pitches it to Luis, say, hey, look, this is what I have an idea for for the drums so like now he's like venturing off into other instruments and stuff like that so we're i mean we're really um just kind of like i mean he really just came in like swinging like as far as like he had like a majority of these songs like just like uh ma a majority pretty much written like i would say like a solid like 75 percent and the rest of the 25 percent if not like kind of cutting back from the original 75 mm -hmm. is uh really just saying hey look this is what i got it's for the most part not done, but like, you know, it's it's definitely enough to give us the the feel, the direction. And then from there, we just kind of each throw in our own little flavor. Um, and really, that's just what it comes down to. But uh, even with these, uh, especially with these uh, later tracks that we're going to be, not the ones we're going to record, but like I would say the last ones for the album, where we've covered pretty much what Austin has brought to the table. But now it just kind of comes down to like, all right, now let's um like those are what i had now let's all come come up with something from like the ground up mm -hmm. okay so uh i mean cool. it really but it's still gonna fall on some i'm sure the same process as far as like hey look one day this just hit me i came up with this kind of riff or i came up with this beat i came up with this rhythm and so forth we pitch it and austin will typically shut it down but uh yeah. no, I'm just <laughs> <laughs> i mean like i said hey like uh that's we're the... all very <laughs> critical of every idea i mean we've yeah. had some songs that like go through riff after riff after yeah. riff and say no not this yeah. no not this but it's not yeah. a bad thing because ultimately not at all to be what this album is just gonna be for anybody who liked the first album i mean that's only we did if you liked it great and we didn't even have austin you know like yeah. for the for the majority of it i should say uh, but now with him and such uh, a lot of talent being brought in and just really steering us in, in such a way that, you know, we, of course, are all on board and we're really just trying to aim high and, and just think big is this album. We're trying to be really critical. It kind of goes back to the whole maturity mindset that we all have as, a, as we've grown as music, musicians, but like 
you know, here as a band, as a family is really just kind of holding each other accountable as to like, is this something worth putting out? Like, you know, it's, yeah. it's, mm. it's and, you know, just because, you know, oh, because Sir, well, you know, I wanted to, or Austin wanted to, and then like, I right, we'll just give it to him. And then we really want to say like, Hey, like we're all in this together. So we all want to like, make sure like we enjoy it for one, but also like so that the, the fans can enjoy it. You know, we don't yeah. want to like, take our process, process lightly and just kind of say, just put it out there for the sake of putting it out there. Yeah, totally. And that's awesome to hear. And, and that, that makes the best music, you know, you oh, have yeah. to be critical. Yeah. And I feel like if you kind of just shit out a song, like, you know, people can totally tell, Yeah, <laughs> but, but even, even with like stuff you guys already have out, like you can tell it was very, it was made very precisely. And even this, this new single, it's like, damn. And if it's, if the album's anywhere as good as that single, I am happy. It is a very <laughs> exciting. Yeah, um, glad so, to hear it. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, I also want to say, um, so you guys have put out a lot of merch CDs for this new record. Do people like expect like a vinyl release or anything extra, or is it just going to be like CDs and and a few shirts and whatnot? We uh, we consider you know we want to do shirts for you. We've got shirts for the new single that we're going to be putting out, and those will be you know killer. We're excited for that. We're gonna have shirts and you know uh, we do we do shirts and stickers stuff like that cds for sure vinyl is something that it's it's tough to get into uh obviously it's on the uptrend you know people are buying more and more every year now which is very interesting it's really cool and it's great because it shows off the art even more it's a bigger piece obviously so it shows off the art and it's really cool i know the hardest thing about it is that you know the extra cost behind it and uh selling it you know in person can be tougher and also the fact that when you um you know of course when you make a song you have to mix and master it when you master a song for digital for like streaming platforms or for a cd that's one kind of mastering and then when you if you master it for vinyl it's completely different so you have to do the whole mastering process twice and yeah. so that can be kind of uh tough to you know of course money wise you got to put in the money to make the vinyls and then you got to put in the money to actually have them, you know, have the right tracks to put on there. Otherwise, it won't sound good. And obviously, we'll, we want to put out the best merch that we can. So we would be interested in a limited run of vinyls. If there's desire for it, if there's a demand for it, we'd be interested in doing it. But it's definitely tough because, you know, there's not nearly as many vinyl manufacturing plants in the world as there used to be. You know, I mean, everybody's kind of working out of the same, almost the same uh, factory in like Romania. You know, yeah. So I remember, you know, there's yeah. bands that we know that have had stuff come out or stuff that was supposed to come out that got pushed back a year because Adele, you know, shoves herself to the front of the line and it says, "I need a a million copies of this," and it that pushes everybody back six months or something. And you know, that happened like years. I don't know. I, I think two, three years ago. And there are some people that still probably haven't gotten their vinyls back because of that kind of stuff. So yeah. being a smaller independent artist, it can be really hard because there aren't many sources for vinyls anymore. So it'll take a long time to get them. But if there's demand for it, we'd love to, because we definitely considered it for the first album. We really looked at it and we're like, we'd be interested. It'd be cool to have that art up on the wall and have it you know, front and center big. And so you could see it from far away. Cause we do love the art on that. And it's yeah. just, it's really cool. It's a cool feel to have a vinyl, you know, especially if you have like a custom vinyl, you know, colored or certain transparency to it or something to it. So totally cool. So we only have like three minutes left. Uh, yeah. This has been pretty awesome so far. So I thank you guys again for doing this. Oh, yeah, um, no, but, you. but I want to say what's, what's next for the band? What can fans, we got the album coming out. Uh, are there any gigs you guys want to announce? Uh, are we going to get any more singles leading up to this record? Well, show-wise, we do have one in uh, June 3rd. This is going to be uh, the Napalm Death one, so that one's we're yeah. really... Yeah, hell yeah. And we're gonna, there, we're going to debut our latest single, Iron Journal. Yeah, really. So it's going to be definitely something uh, new for all our fans. I mean, new for us, as it'll be our first time really performing playing it, it yeah. playing it for an audience. So, But uh, you know, it's been fun to play in the band room, the practice room, so we're excited to play it outside for the first time ever. Yeah. Awesome. Then, um, after that, you know, we do have, uh, we've, we've got a song that we've been playing for probably since about early 2022. We've been playing it live, but we don't have any recorded version of it that's been out. But uh, okay. that is, we do have an idea for the next single. We want to put that one out there. And that's the thing is that, you know, people locally, they've heard it. They understand it. They kind of get it. But they've maybe not heard all the nuance of it. And obviously people, you know, like yourself out in Boston or anywhere else in the world, they've not heard it yet because it's just been a live 
things. So we're going to be putting that out, that one out next. And that one's only, I mean, we love that one. We're comfortable playing it. We love playing it live. And so we're really excited for that one. So there will be another single in, I don't know, maybe a month, month and a half. So. Awesome. Well, really exciting. Uh, thank you guys so much for doing this. Really appreciate it. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Brandon. Thanks Cannot for wait for the album. I'm Brandon Vatic, and this is Disturbing the Priest. Yeah.